Hi guys, welcome back to another video and today we'll be starting another topic that is photomorphogenesis. So photomorphogenesis, we'll be explaining you this later uh, but first of all, let's see what effects does light have on the plants. So light has profound effects on the growth and development of plants. It obviously is vital for photosynthesis. Obviously we have studied about uh, stomata and how... Uh, you know, light is procured and carbon dioxide is taken in, water is eliminated out and CO2 is uh, taken in by the plants for the process of photosynthesis. And now this process is helping in the further, uh, you know, process of photomorphogenesis. So basically we have seen that light is having a major effect on the growth and development of plants. We have seen, uh, you know, whenever there is a sun in the right side of the plant, the plant, all the plant leaves are facing towards the right. And if it is in the left, all the plant leaves face towards the left. For example, when, uh, if we talk about sunflower, we can see that in that very easily in cases of sunflowers. So the next is, uh, when the seedling cell, uh, when the seedlings are grown in dark, they have a pale and usually tall and spindly appearance and that is called as the etiolated growth. Whenever we put the seedlings in the dark, they have a very pale color and due to pale color, they usually appear to be very spindly appearance and they are usually unusually tall. Alright, normal nahi hota unki height, it is usually a very abnormal height and abnormally tall hote hain. So that is why this is called as etiolated growth. So now what is the process of photomorphogenesis? The light mediated changes in the plant growth and development but they are independent of photosynthesis and that is called as photomorphogenesis. Matlab ki the light mediated changes, the changes that are mediated by the light. Matlab light ki which is jitne bhi changes aate hai plant mein, all the changes that occur in the plant due to the light and the changes are affecting the plant growth and development. But all these changes are independent of photosynthesis. So therefore it is referred as photomorphogenesis. Now photomorphogenesis includes photoreceptors. Now there are three in total photoreceptors which are involved in these responses. So the three photoreceptors are photochrome, cryptochrome and phototropins. Alright there is a T missing here. Sorry for the spelling. So now the cryptochrome First, we'll be talking about the cryptochrome. In this video, out of the three photochromes or the, out of the three photoreceptors in the process of photomorphogenesis, we'll be talking about cryptochrome. So, what is cryptochrome? It is a type of chromoprotein and it is a blue light photoreceptor of plants. It is derived from a Greek word meaning the hidden color. Alright, cryptochrome kya hota hai? It is a type of chromoprotein and blue color ka, blue light color ka photoreceptor hota hai plants ke andar. It is derived from the Greek word meaning hidden color. Now chromophores for cryptochrome are flavin and terin. Two type ke chromo, uh, chromo, uh, cryptochrome uh, chromophores hote hai for cryptochrome and they are called as flavin and terin. Now three common types of flavins are riboflavin and its derivatives, effemin and FAT. Till now you must have understood whatever I have spoken and now we will move on to the next point. That is flavins are complexed with proteins. Now we have told that what are flavins? Flavins are basically the chromophores of the cryptochrome. Okay, And cryptochrome is a type of a photoreceptor in case of the process of photomorphogenesis. So flavins are basically the chromophores of cryptochromes and there are three common flavins that is riboflavin and the two derivatives of riboflavin are FMN and FAD. Alright, so flavins when they are complexed with proteins that is F flavins plus proteins they are called as flavoproteins. Therefore cytochrome is a flavoprotein. Alright, now Cryptochrome are found in plant species. All the cryptochromes are found in plant species, insects and animals and they play a vital role in the generation and maintenance of circadian rhythm. Circadian rhythm we will be studying uh, further but right now we will move forward. Circadian rhythm is a process in which uh, you know the day and night change. I will be explaining in detail later on but first of all you need to know all these points. Alright, so there are 
these are structurally related to photolyase. Now what are photolyase? They are the blue light activated enzymes that repairs the pyrimidine dimers of DNA. Alright, so photolyase activity kya hoti hai? These are structurally related to photolyase. Okay, photolyase se kyun related hoti hai? Because blue light activated enzymes hoti hai and they repair the pyrimidine dimers in the DNA. Now, cryptochrome do not have a DNA repair activity but they are thought to have evolved from photolyase. Okay, unke pas DNA repair ki activity to nahi hoti hai but they are thought to have formed or thought to have evolved from photolyase because they have the similar activity of the repairing of the pyrimidine dimers in the DNA. Now, cryptochromes are composed of two domains. Cryptochrome ki do domains kaun si hoti hain? First is amino terminal photolyase um, homology region and second is carboxy terminal domain of varying size. Varying size matlab na chota na bada, it all depends upon itself kitna kitna uh, 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 size hoga all right so amino terminal photolyase uh, homology region uh, that is phr it possesses two chromophores flavin and terin okay so flavin is fad and uh, it gets absorbed at 450 nanometers and terin is 510 methyl tetrahydrofolate and gets absorbed at 380 nanometers this is an important point here cryptochromes are dimeric protein all right need to know that now isme humne ye likha hai methyl tetrahydrofolate and fad photolyse homology region which is closer to the n terminal n terminal same thing and this is the das region das which is closer to the c region all right Now, dimerization is essential. Abhi humne bola ki jo, this is the point, cryptochromes are dimeric proteins. Why is the dimerization important? Dimerization is essential for their biological activity and is mediated by the light sensory and terminal domain. Light terminal, uh, light sensory the domain hota hai, that is not C terminal, it is N terminal domain. Alright, so dimerization Q essential hai. Dimerization is basically very, very important for all the biological activity and it is mediated by the light sensory N terminal domain. Now, let's move on to the C terminal domain. The unique C terminal domain that is DAS transduces the light signal by interacting with the E3 ubiquitin ligase COP1. Alright, now first we have bola the N terminal domain that is light sensory. Okay, and the C terminal domain is the uh, helping, is playing a helping hand in transducing the signal or the light signal by interacting with the ES ubiquitin lyase that is COP1. But two similar cryptochromes exist in most plants that is cry1 and cry2. Now cry1 is always stable, cry2 is rapidly degraded in the presence of light. Alright, so these are the two similar cryptochromes. Why are they called as similar cryptochromes? Because they have the same name uh, that is cry1 and cry2. And you must have heard these names in uh, BG toxin as well. So cry1 is basically a very stable one and cry2 is rapidly degraded in the presence of light. Now next we move on to Arabidopsis. In case of Arabidopsis, Cry1 and Cry2, nuclear proteins mediate the regulation of gene expression and entrainment of circadian clock in response to light. So what happens in case of Arabidopsis, there are two, uh, two nuclear proteins that is Cry1 and Cry2. They mediate the regulation, regulation karwate hain of gene expression and entrainment of circadian clock in response to light. Okay. They, blow, play, uh, they both play a major role in plant photomorphogenesis. Uh, what is plant photomorphogenesis? Uh, that is written in the bracket inhibition of stem elongation by blue light. That is the blue light inhibits the elongation of the stem. Stimulation of leaf expansion by the light, that is it helps in the stimulation of expansion of leaf. Alright, and the third is regulation of floral initiation by day length. That is if the day length increases then there is a regulation of the floral initiation. That is 
full start the flower start blossoming it is the regulation of initiation by the of the floral uh, initiation by the day length now cryptochromes inhibit cop1 induced protein degradation in darkness the cop1 is associated by uh, associated with spa1 and to degrade the transcription factor such as hy5 which induces expression of genes required for photomorphogenesis upon activation of the light blue light the crypto uh, cryptochrome in the nucleus forms a complex with cop1 spa1 that prevents them for acting and then preventing the degradation of hy5 and other transcription factors that promote photomorphogenesis blue light induces uh, uh, phosphorylation and of the cryptochrome also appears to be important in mod modulating this activity okay so now let's move on to what is circadian rhythm circadian rhythm it refers to the daily cycles of lightness and darkness that are affecting the plants all right in plants circadian rhythm includes the leaf movement day and night positions ethylene production co2 assimilation stomatal opening and closing all right when organisms is trans when an organism is transferred for uh, daily light uh, dark cycle cycles to continuous darkness matlab whenever there is an organism which is facing a daily light and dark cycle but all together it is being transferred to a continuous darkness or a continuous light region then many of these rhythms continue to be expressed for at least several days all right so now under such uniform conditions the period of the rhythm is close to 24 hours therefore any biological rhythm that displays an indigenous oscillation of 24 hours it is called as circadian rhythm a circadian rhythm is drawn driven by circadian clock what is circadian clock it refers to the biological clock that generates and maintains the oscillations of physiological and molecular processes with a period of uh, which uh, with a period length close to 24 hours are also referred to as circadian clocks matlab jitne bhi circadian clocks hote hain humne pehle bola these uh, you know circadian rhythm ki activities driven by circadian clock so what is it it refers to a biological clock circadian clock is basically a biological clock that generates and maintains oscillations of physiological and molecular processes with a period length close to 24 hours also referred to as the circadian clocks all right so these are the basic things you need to remember about uh, photomorphogenesis and in the cryptochrome in the next video i'll be posting about photochromes and phototropins in detail with their structure so in this uh, the important points are labeled terin and flavin proteins and how are they arranged what is the function of n terminal domain c terminal domain and what are the three common flavins present what is circadian rhythm and cr1 cry1 and cry2 function and how do cryptochromes inhibit the cop induced protein degradation these are all important points that you need to study all right so take care guys see you guys in the next video and don't forget to like share and subscribe bye